Growth is such an essential part of anything that we do in life, especially when it comes to things that we invest our time in because you never want to become too stagnant. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I use Skillshare. I'm always looking for ways to improve the quality of these videos. And Skillshare provides an entire catalog of ad-free classes, so I can do just that. Let me take you through it so I can show you just how simple it is. So you go to Skillshare, sign in, and search for the type of skill you're looking to work on. Or you can just search the specific creator's name. For me, I'm always looking to up the quality of the videos, so I search MKBHD for Marcus Brown Lee's videos on how to do just that. So from there, you choose the class you want and you start exploring new ways to improve your craft. And just like with any of the creators that are featured on Skillshare, they take you through their different methods and strategies on how they became successful and show you how to do it. And just to give you a little added motivation, the first 1,000 people that use the link in the description to join Skillshare will receive a free one month trial. So you can discover even more ways to take yourself to that next level. Yeah. So this is the morning after. The morning after the infamous, uh, the Raven-esque light though, uh, Roquan Smith trade. And again, good trade. Uh, you always want playmakers on your football team. It's always nice to add better players and better quality players to your squad to make you even better uh, and even if there's an area of strength on your football team it's nice when you can make them that much stronger uh, and even though uh, inside linebacker for the Ravens this year there's been a lot of up and down um, but the Ravens decided hey you know what we're gonna pounce on this opportunity we're gonna take this opportunity and they did it uh, so their defense that has been coming along and getting a lot better over time um, they're gonna be getting even better um, so with Roquan Smith uh, a lot of people heard me say that I feel like this is the end for Patrick Queen like this means the this confirms that Patrick Queen uh, won't be a Raven for too much longer um, and but some people that I've talked to uh, after the trade went down they're like why, why do you say that like wh wh why would you say this means the end of Patrick Queen well let me break it down from you from my point of view all right so Roquan Smith well first with Patrick Queen the Ravens before this season even started they told you exactly how they felt about Patrick Queen. They told you, they showed you their comfort level uh, of how the comfortable, how comfortable they are with Patrick Queen. Why? Because they tried to, they really tried hard, even offered more guaranteed money than the Rams did to one Bobby Wagner. They did that. This wasn't a, a thought. This wasn't a speculation. They did that. So that lets you know right there, like, oh, okay, yeah, they're not comfortable. They're not 100% with Patrick Queen. Um, and then on top of that, they still brought back Josh Bynes. If they were comfortable with their inside linebackers, like the guys that they drafted for the future, like a Patrick Queen, like a Malik Harrison, if they were comfortable with those guys for the future, why would they go and get a Bobby Wagner, who, who would not be a Depp guy? He wouldn't be coming here to be a Depp guy. Why would they bring back Josh Bynes? Josh Bynes. And Josh Bynes is not bad, but why would they bring back Josh Bynes? Somebody who played with Ray Lewis. Why would they bring him back again? Josh Bynes has continued to be sort of a savior at linebacker for these Ravens for the past, since like 2019. They just keep bringing him back over and over again because Ravens have just not been comfortable at the linebacker position. So then, fast forward um, to now, they trade for Roquan Smith. Now, like we said in the video after the trade, Roquan Smith is not a rental. They're not, because the Ravens, they know Roquan Smith's situation. Roquan Smith wanted to get paid. Chicago was hesitant on it. He wanted to get traded. Roquan Smith wants a lot of money per year. He wants to, he wants to reset the market at inside linebacker. Why wouldn't he? It's his contract time. He's in the fifth year. Why not? Chicago wasn't going to do it. He requested to get traded out of there. He finally got traded. You, you think the contract situation just went away? No, of course not. And the, we know that and the Ravens know that. And I think with Patrick Queen, the Ravens, they, it, it was not trending like they were going to pick up his fifth year option already. So now that they picked up an inside linebacker, you think they're going to pick up the fifth year option now? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. And none of this is a shot at Patrick Queen at all. 
So please don't take it as such. Um, this is just the business of the NFL. It's the business. So with, with that being said, um, Roquan Smith, he, he, he's going to want to get paid. He's going to want his bread. And the Ravens, they know that situation. So, and I, I think the Ravens are going to give it to him. This is one contract that I'm actually confident that the Ravens are going to get done. Because, again, Ra Ravens don't make these moves like that, especially a second-round pick. They don't make moves like that just to be like, ah, you know what, nah, we tried it out. And we know with well, Yannick and Gakwe, remember that one? What, they gave up a third and a fifth, something like that? Tried it, it, it just, it didn't work. It didn't work. Just wasn't a good fit. But guys like Marcus Peters, they traded for him, contract extension. Calais Campbell, it was in the offseason, but they traded for him, redid the contract. So this is just, you just almost just know the, the, the Ravens ain't going to be like, oh, you'll just come in here for, for the, the second half of the season, and then we'll be, no, mm -mm. not at that position. Um, this also would give the Ravens an opportunity to do something that I think they've been wanting to do for a long time, the green dot. I, I think that it was the Raven, the Ravens envisioned uh, giving the green dot to Patrick Queen. Uh, when they drafted him, I think they, that's what they wanted to do, um, but it just it hadn't worked out. Um, he hadn't fully worked out. Now he again, he, Patrick Queen not a bad player, but it just hasn't completely worked out all the way to where they've been comfortable to be like, all right, Patrick Queen, you take over the green dot. It just, it just hasn't happened. So this would put them in a position to give the green dot to their inside linebacker. Um, cause they, cause again, this move is about the future. And another reason I say that is because normally Ravens have the green dot on the inside linebacker. Remember back in CJ Mosley days and stuff. But anyway, um, they drafted Kyle Hamilton as a safety. They signed Marcus Williams as a safety. $70 million, like five year deal. Who's the odd man out of that equation? Very, very soon. Chuck Clark. Who is the green dot right now? Chuck Clark. So they need to have a plan in place to move that green dot to somebody else when Chuck Clark is not around anymore. And will Chuck Clark be traded at the end of this season? What, what, what's his contract situation? He has one or two more years left. I forgot how many years he has left on, on his deal. Um, but you got to figure Chuck Clark is not going to be around uh, whether it's the end of this year or the end of next year. Either way, after that, Chuck Clark is not going to be around anymore. So they're going to make the shift as safety to Kyle Hamilton. So, again, moves for the future. This is why I just I feel like that, that this is it for Patrick Queen. Another example. Ravens have shown you, like, they, they show you their decisions before they show you their decisions. Hollywood Brown, 2019 first-round pick. Um, he did a lot for the Ravens. Ravens did a lot for him. Uh, they, they made a lot of good plays together. They had some rough plays together, but Hollywood was unhappy. He was unhappy. He was unhappy for, like, two years, though. Requested a trade, been talking to the Ravens for about it for a long time. Talked to Lamar about it for a long time. What they do, they draft the Rashad Bateman. They fooled me too. I'm thinking, oh man, we got another first round receiver. Da -da -da -da. And I remember somebody well, a while back, they brought it up in questions from subscribers. They were like, oh, is, is Rashad Bateman Hollywood's replacement? And I was like, no, no. Yeah, he was. He was. That was Ravens' plan in place for the future. They traded Hollywood away. Orlando Brown Jr. Orlando Brown Jr. Uh, Ronnie Stanley was hurt. Um, Orlando Brown Jr. took over at left tackle. Uh, then Ronnie Stanley came back. Ronnie Stanley got paid. Um, and Orlando Brown Jr., he, he knew. He knew, like, why he replaced Ronnie, but then when Ronnie got healthy, Ronnie replaced him, inserted back into the lineup as a starter. I mean, he never lost his spot. He was just hurt. And Orlando Brown Jr. said, ah, nah, I'm a left tackle. I'm a left tackle. He, he saw the money. And I was just telling one of my guys who, who, who felt like he, he told me, um, oh, no, Patrick Queen not going anywhere. I told him, follow the money. Follow the money. And what I meant when I say that, Ravens ain't paying everybody. They're not paying everybody, especially at the same position. Roquan Smith will get taken care of. Patrick. They, they're not going to pay both him and Patrick Queen. They're not going to pay uh, Roquan Smith and then pick up Patrick Queen fifth year option. Nah, they're not doing that. Ravens ain't doing that. Come on now. Come on now. Um, but yeah, Orlando Brown Jr. He got replaced. I know, I know it was Ronnie Stanley's position, but he got first he replaced Ronnie Stanley, then Ronnie Stanley came back and replaced him. He said, No, 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 we in the same position. Ronnie getting all that money. I know Ravens are gonna pay me. I want out. 
Got traded to the Chiefs. I traded to the Chiefs. Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst. First round pick and everything. And him and Mark Andrews, they, 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 and each situation is different, but it's sort of the same thing at the same time. It's all about replacements. Hayden Hurst, first round draft pick. Mark Andrews, third round draft pick. Hayden Hurst, he was a starter. Hayden Hurst got hurt. Mark Andrews inserted to lineup. Mark Andrews took over and took off. Boom. And that was it. He ended up, he ended up getting traded. He ended up getting traded. Well, he ended up requesting to be traded because Mark Andrews was just out there killing it. Hayden Hurst got replaced. Then he wanted out. So I expect the same thing to happen with Patrick Queen. And really, whether he wants out or not, the, Rav the Ravens are not going to give him a second contract unless it be something crazy cheap. But And it's about opportunity, too. You got to look at it from Patrick Queen's point of view, too. Patrick Queen was here as a Mike linebacker. Now, something that um, uh, somebody gave me a nice reminder of, Patrick Queen at LSU, he was the wheel linebacker. So he, he didn't have to be, he, he was more sort of Robin to the, to the Mikes being the Batman. And, and that's fine. That's what he excelled at. That's what he did well. And that's what I expect the Ravens to do with him now. Um, you, and you can, you give, you, you allow Patrick Queen to be more flexible now. You allow him to be a little bit more free now. So, and Patrick Queen has not been playing bad overall. He's been playing pretty good. But you got to think about it from Patrick Queen's point of view as far as opportunities. Now he has, well, not now, but if he asks to be traded, if he asks out, if he asks, hey, I, I love y'all Ravens. Thank you for everything. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. But I think, I think it's time. Ravens will respect that and they'll trade him like they do everybody else who asks. But um, you got to think about his opportunity. You think he wants to give up being a Mike linebacker? No. You think he wants to give up snap? No. And he's still going to be out on the field a lot, but he's getting shifted over. You think he wants that? No. So, it's just, that, that's, that's why I say I, I, I expect him going. But I wanted to make sure that um, I, I broke it down in detail just for anybody who wasn't 100% uh, sure where I was coming from. So, hopefully that made it like, like that water and crystal clear. Um, anyway, let's get some comments and thoughts from some different people on uh, this Roquan Smith uh, move. Anyway, um, first one came from my guy, Phil. He said, I love the trade for Roquan Smith. It makes the middle of our defense even better. But my only question is, with Smith being on the last year of his rookie contract, come next year, he's going to cost around 17 mil per year because I know EDC is not going to let him be a one-year rental. This puts a significant hit on Lamar's contract negotiations. Uh, do you think now that they've made the defense better? Lamar may negotiate and consider around 46 to 47 mil like Josh Allen and Mahomes did instead of uh, demanding the 50 mil plus? Take care. No. No. Because what they got to do with him? Think, like, what, what does that have to do with him? Why, why should Lamar be like, all right, you know what? These Ravens, they, uh, they just brought in Roquan Smith. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they got to pay him. So, you know what? Let, let me ask for a little bit less. Let me come down on my price. What? You? No. That ain't happening. Um, but anyway, next question came from Amari. Uh, so shout out to both of them, Phil and Amari, for being patrons. He said, man, I just thought about this, and I hope the world can hear this. Our team is going through growing pains on defense because they have a new defense, and they are still playing good in many areas. Uh, the other thing, our defense took a major hit when Hollywood, or our offense took a major hit when Hollywood left because Lamar likes to throw to people he can trust. I think we all forgot that Hollywood was one of our most dangerous red zone threats. On a broken play, Lamar always found him a mark in the end zone. Give these guys some time. I think we're about to get hot once they unleash the backups. Uh, <laughs> that just sounded funny. Unleash the backups. But anyway, uh, let Mark and Bate rest so at the end of the year, the trust is there with everyone on the field. Ravens to the Super Bowl. This is all we needed. Okay, so he ain't say nothing about Roquan Smith. So I, I guess he was just like, you know what? Roquan Smith, cool, whatever. Oh, he sent this before Roquan Smith. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes, man. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is important building trust with other people because um, if you build trust with other people, you just, you're that much more uh, dangerous. But my guy, Kogan. Kogan has some stuff to say. He said, Roquan uh, is the end of two guys in Baltimore. Let's see what he's talking about. He said, what's up, Engraven? I hope all is well in Florida and safe travels back home. I was just thinking that the Roquan Smith trade could mean the end of the end for not one, but two players tenor on the Ravens. I know you talked about it being the end for Queen, but I think it might be even more so for Chuck Clark. See, look at that forward thinking. Kroger with that forward thinking. But anyway, let's keep going. He said, uh, I feel like one of the main reasons we kept him around was because his ability to wear the green dot well. We all assume that torch will be passed to Kyle Hamilton, but maybe the coaching staff is second guessing that decision and or is going to want someone with more experience to wield it. Not to mention we're going to need all the cap space we can to try to sign both Roquan and Lamar. Anyways, have a good week and just like Bateman the next few weeks and Queen after this year, 
I'm out. I kind of felt bad for saying that last one, but we all know it's true. See, uh, Kogan gets it, man. He gets it. And, and again, these, these are not shots at Patrick Queen. I know some people, they, they take it like that. It's not that. We're just talking about the business. Straight up. It's just about the business. Um, next question came from my guy Sebastian. He said, after the Roquan trade, we now have a field general linebacker, a ball hawk free safety. Well, he's not healthy right now, but we'll get him back later. A good run game, good tight ends, and a mid overall offense. I feel like I've seen this version of the Ravens before. Do you think they'll go go, go and go replicate 2012? Well, I think we're in Anquan Bolden away from that, and I suggest make likely as a wide receiver since he's good at the passing game and a bit lacking at the blocking game. Look, I, I keep saying people see that. I keep seeing people say that. Likely he's a tight end. He used to be a wide receiver. He's a tight end. He can move a little bit now, but he's a tight end. Do you want somebody to be a wide receiver? Get a wide receiver. Don't try to don't try to play musical chairs at positions and whatnot. No. Likely is a tight end. Mark Andrews is a tight end. Neither one of them two are wide receivers. They catch passes. They run. They get yak sometimes. They are not wide receivers. Get a wide receiver. He said, also, do you think the reunion by the 2012 Ravens, especially Ray Lewis, influenced the front office to really trade for a field general like Roquan? Hope your fam is good and take care. That's, ooh, that's a good little... Uh, that, that could have But I really think it's Patrick Queen that influenced him to trade for Roquan Smith Because again like we talked about earlier They showed you how they felt about um, Patrick Queen So I, I think that was the reason that they traded for Roquan um, Anyway uh, Next question came from oh, uh, Maybe it's more of a comment TJ He said You Roquan Smith is a raven And your voice let's go And they aren't, they aren't done can't be done until Lamar get a number one. This our year, EDC get a wide receiver for Lamar. God bless y'all at team. Keep it clean. Hey, we'll see. We'll see. Because I'm recording this at 9.19 a.m. Um, on the trade deadline day, November 1st. We'll see. We'll see. Now, um, my guy did tell me, who's plugged in with, with another team, um, and this team, he, he did tell me that the Ravens, they trying. They trying. They did try. They made a significant offer for somebody. But so I'm like, okay, I, really, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that a lot. So we'll see if it comes to fruition. Um, after this trade, I don't know. Because it, it was two completely different draft picks that he, he told me that they offer for some, oh boy, and if it went through, that would be a beautiful thing. But anyway, um, next question came from my guy, John. He said, what's up, Engraving? What's up, team? Keep it clean. I was wondering what the addition of Smith uh, with the addition of Smith, uh, do we have potential to go to a 4-3 defense for our front seven? Yeah, Mike McDonald, he runs multiple types of defenses. That was his thing coming in. So, yeah, they do have that potential to unlock that 4-3 defense with um, Roquan Smith at inside linebacker, Patrick Queen, and, and Tyus Bowser at the outside linebacker, maybe a Dafe away at defensive end, Justin Houston at defensive end, Calais Campbell and, and, and Matt Abike at interior defensive line. Or Calais Campbell and um, Travis Jones, Travis Jones and Matt Abike. The possibilities are there, for sure. So, yeah. Anyway, he said, I know our secondary is one of the best in the league. However, without quarterback pressure, we cannot expect him to cover for more than six seconds. With everyone getting healthy, our front seven could look like David Ajabo. Oh, I forgot about Ajabo. David Ajabo on the right end, Calais Campbell and Justin Matt Abike in the middle. And have Adafi away lineup as the left end. Uh, in the middle linebackers, you can move Patrick Queen to the right side in the middle and Bowser on the left. What do you think? Okay, see, we're on the same page. I should have finished reading the whole thing before I started talking. But, yeah, we we, we definitely on the same boat. Um, he also said, uh, whoa, he sent a long one. He said, so I just a video about acquiring Smith from Chicago. You stated that uh, you believe that this is the end for PQ as a Raven, which then takes away him from playing the right side of the 4-3 that I previously sent in. So just a minor tweak. Why not keep everything I had stated prior, but move Bowser to the right side and possibly do something outrageous and put Hamilton on the left side? Now, I know they wouldn't do it this year. It'll be, it'd be more for next year. However, he's 6'4", currently getting outplayed at the position by Chuck Clark, who does not want to let it go, but we can still use them on the field. Again, I stated he's 6'4", inches, and he has decent speed, big enough to contest and quick enough to contest the modern-day tight end. I'm just tired of the same Ravens philosophy of being good at many things versus great at one thing. And I think we have some great playmakers who are asked to do other things versus what they can do, which would immediately impact our team. Okay, so you see, he, he, won, he won Kyle Hamilton, the outside linebacker. I told y'all, Kyle Hamilton, as an outside linebacker, he might as well be. Because the Ravens, they ain't, they ain't using much at safety. Um, but no, nah, he's been getting better. He's been getting better. Uh, the game seemed like it's slowing down a bit for him, so that's a good thing. 
Uh, he said, Oway is a speed rusher. He's not a cover guy. Yes, he can do it, but pressure is his game speed, um, and that's his game force. And hurry throws, creates turnovers. I need our players to be put in the best position, but the best situation for them because then it becomes the best situation for us. Oh, I love how he put that. Um, now, this is a rant. Team keep it clean, and I'm sorry. Being a Baltimore guy who has had to move to Cincinnati and deal with the debacle last year, I need for us to destroy our division every year. I got Cincinnati people losing bets and having to wear my Ravens Lamar Jackson jersey and take photos, and I need for it to continue. My bad, but yeah, keep up the good work, bro. Oh, so that personal form, man. He, he, he right there. Right there in the middle of everything. So... Last question on this episode that kind of just was like a, a not a ranting episode, but just an ongoing. We ain't even do no pauses for new questions. We just jump straight into it. Last question on this episode came from man. Who did it even come from? Where, where's, where's my guy's name? I, I, I can't even see my guy's name. One second. Oh, well. I guess I'll read it and try to figure out his name afterward. My apologies. I, I uh, Oh, because he sent it to the wrong email. But I gave him a pass. So I forwarded it to the right email. That's why I didn't see his name. But anyway, send it to the right email, y'all. Please make it easy for everybody. Anyway, he said, uh, I know you have covered this previously in Graven, but I'm a big fan of your work, and I think you are a big voice in the Ravens flocking community. After Thursday Night Football, it bothered me seeing Lamar hold up that sign that was thrown at him, uh, but it was timely and made for good TV. Yeah, that 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 sign was uh, that was something right there, and it, it did make for good TV. You you were hundred percent right about that one, um, because the timing of it was just it it was too perfect. It was too perfect. Um, oh, this is from Ellis. Ellis. Okay, so I found the name Ellis. But yeah, the timing of it was perfect because it just so happened. Maybe it was planned because it just so happened to fall down right when Lamar was walking. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I see what you're doing. But anyway, um, he said, I will cut to the point. Lamar Action Jackson is negotiating with the Billionaire Boys Club and, and his mother. I repeat, his mother is attempting to navigate one of the biggest and most lucrative guaranteed deals in NFL history. That's true. You a thousand percent right about that. Nothing you said about that is wrong. Let's continue. He said, Apologi apologies for the two emails sending from an iPhone while walking is not always good business. Uh, that That's like negotiating with billionaires and having your mom as your legal counsel. True, it is. Uh, he said, in my opinion, I don't think the GMs and league executives can take Lamar seriously. Look at how he, he look at how uh, they fumbled the Lords of London and in injury insurance. I don't know. I don't know what that, that is. Uh, these are injury insurance claims college players historically have taken out uh, to ensure payment of injury. Willis McGahee, a former Raven in Miami Hurricane, did it, and several players since have made this move. I also think the presidents of his contract would set uh, is bad for the NFL. Deshaun Watson was an outlier, and in my opinion, something else. I, I won't go there because it's not a clean topic, and we need to keep it clean. Oh, okay. You're talking about all the Deshaun, Wat Deshaun Watson stuff. Um... Let's keep going. You, you, you sound like you're an agent. Uh, do you think Lamar needs to grow up to get his mother out of his affairs, hire a review attorney or a sports agent, maybe go with LeBron's agency just to make things respectable? Why wouldn't it be respectable just because his mom? Like, uh, pe people got to stop doing this. You, you got to stop doubting people. Just because somebody has never done something before, it does not mean that they can't do it. Do you know what type of background his mom has? Do you know her experience in the business world? Hey, has, has Lamar's mom always been involved? Has she steered him wrong before? Have they made a wrong turn before when it comes to the business? No. So why should she stop now? Just because th this is historical. This is big. Like you mentioned, this is huge. He, he's messing with the, the billionaire boys club. Like you mentioned. Lamar's mom has not steered him wrong before. Why would she all of a sudden steer him wrong now? And who's to say they, they haven't talked to lawyers and whatnot about this whole thing? Like, they, again, pe pe I feel like people just, they, they just keep on dismissing uh, his mom from this whole thing. Like, like his mom or his camp, like they don't know what they're doing. Again, just because you haven't experienced it before doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. It doesn't mean that you can't handle it. So, it, uh, uh, so much in the world is about opportunity. I know me personally, I, I've, I've been in, and I told y'all this before, like I've been at previous jobs where, especially my, my last job before we started doing this, where I, I knew I could do something. I knew I could do this position that I applied for, but I just wasn't given the opportunity. Wasn't given it. Tried to apply for it over and over, never given the opportunity. 
And I'm like, man, like I, I know that I'm qualified for it. Not in no like cocky way or nothing like that, but I knew that I was qualified for it. I knew I could do it. Wasn't given the opportunity. And stuff like that hurts. It hurts. Especially when you know and then you see other people get the opportunity to it's like, man. Like what's up? But anyway. Um, a little personal there, but anyway, it, it, we moved on now, though. But um, no, man, I, I I see what you're saying, but I I, I disagree with uh, how you feel about it. But anyway, uh, he said we understand why Lamar is a mama's boy, but this is embarrassing. No respectable GM would negotiate one of the biggest deals in history to a single mom with no training or track record in sports negotiation. Wow, you, you're just getting disrespectful now, man. You 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 you're getting very disrespectful with it. There's this is this is just. This is bad. This is very bad. This is no. Yeah, you. This is getting worse by the second, man. Um. Do you know who Lamar Jackson is? Do you know what he's done for this team? If you take Lamar Jackson away from the Ravens, Ravens are they're bad. They're really bad. Um. He got respect based off of that alone. So they have no choice but to come with respect when it comes to contract negotiations. Another reason because the rate, I mean, Lamar Jackson and his mom, his camp, his people, they're not settling. They're not settling. They're not settling. So Ravens got to respect that from Joe. They could be like, oh, and Ravens already offered a deal. Did Lamar Jackson and his camp take it? No. Because they're not settling. They're not settling for less. So, uh, yeah, this, he said it would make all sports agents look highly incompetent and not needed. Hence, that probably is true to some degree, but business is not about fair and being good. Do you think that Lamar should and could wise up and get more respectable representation? No, uh, but I think you should wise up and be more respectable uh, of them because, yeah, this is just straight up, straight up disrespect. Um, but no, because they, again, stop discrediting people. Especially if you don't know their background. Alright, so everything that you watched earlier in this video, that was recorded before the trade deadline. Now I'm coming to you after the trade deadline and, well, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, good morning, Engraving. I hope all is well with the, you and the fam. I appreciate it. Also, hope that you all are enjoying your vacation. Yes, we are. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, let's get straight to it. Does this trade for Roquan Smith solidify the Ravens paying Lamar? Hear me out. Making a huge trade like this makes me think that Baltimore plans on signing Lamar long term and using the franchise tag on Roquan Smith. Just a positive thought, but knowing the Ravens business side, this is unlikely. Speaking of likely, ooh, that was a smooth transition right there. I love how you did that. But before uh, we get into your second part, does it mean the Ravens plan on signing Lamar long term? I don't know. I I, I, I don't know. That's a, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, before this trade, I, I just I, I I didn't envision the Ravens signing Lamar long term, and after the trade, it didn't change any of my feelings on that. I'm hoping that they do, but I'm hoping that they do, but still do a better job of really building around him. But I don't know. I think it's still up in the air at this point, man. I really do. Um, I just again, it's it's just really the philosophy, man. And I, I'm I'm tired of saying it, but that it is what it is. Um, so I don't know, man. I really don't know. No clue. Uh, but then he says, speaking of likely, I feel real good about him being tight end too. Uh, and hopefully this opens up Roman and Lamar to spread the ball around to playmakers. Thanks for listening to my wild conspiracies. And I apologize if I interrupted your family time, buddy. God bless. Go Ravens and team. Keep it clean. Shout out to my guy, Mike, man. And you're good, man. And, and yeah, that's important that Lamar does that. Uh, a better job of spreading the ball out. It's important that Greg Roman call more plays to get other people involved. It's important that Harbaugh and Greg Roman, they scheme guys open. It, it's, it's so important from everybody because you want to be dangerous. You want to be a dangerous offense. You want to be a consistently dangerous offense. So it's important that you do everything in your power to do just that. And what looks like it's the last question on this episode came from my guy, Kevin. And he sent this before the trade deadline. But he said, Ravens mismanagement. Uh, a. Raven, Ravens management slash owners are disrespectful. Seeing what A.J. Brown did to the Steelers, can you imagine what Lamar would do to a team that had to double team one receiver? We'll never know Lamar's full potential until he gets a dangerous number one wide receiver. I don't say I'm wrong much, but again, I was 100% wrong about the Ravens being good with what they have lol stay blessed brother and go get lamar number one wide receiver well well 
it is what it is, man. Um, like I said, it, at this point, I mean, not even just at this point. It's it's what it's been. Again, we we know how the Ravens get down. We know how they operate and whatnot. It's it's not not a surprise anything, and we obviously hope the best for Bait, Doof, Pro, Wallace, Demarcus. Um, but man, it's just like we're 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 at the point of the season that I was worried that the Ravens would be at. Um, they can overcome. They should be able to overcome it. Um, but I just, I don't think that they should have even had been here. And I know a lot of people talk about, oh man, no, the Ravens are fine at wide receiver. The Ravens are just fine at wide receiver. The Ravens didn't even believe that they were just fine at wide receiver. Why you think all these transactions kept happening? Deshaun Jackson, Andy Isabella, Bailey Gaither. Um, who else? They, they, they done sign, oh, they done sign and sign and release people from the practice squad back and forth. So they obviously don't feel like they good there. So why do you? Yeah. Shout out to Graven.